Hello and welcome. Uh, we're back with the Singer 700 series sewing machines here. This is the 760 in particular. Uh, but this uh, video covers most of the 700 series range. So you may find that when selecting the stitch here, when you push in the uh, lever here, the button to turn the dial to select the different stitches, that it may get jammed and you, you can't uh, select other stitches. So you can see there that I can select the left one, the second, the third, fourth. Oh, I can actually go past now. It's freed up a little bit, but it's still jamming there again. So you might find that you can select in this direction without actually pushing the button in, which, you know, you yeah, it's jammed again, which you shouldn't be able to do. Now, the reason for that is that there's a broken uh, quadrant gear in here. I'm going to show you how to replace that and reset the machine to get it all working again. Yeah, sorry about the state of this machine. This is just a machine that I um, grabbed out of my stash of machines. I haven't fully cleaned it, so it's a little bit grubby. Um, this happens to be the only one that's got this problem that I've got, so it's a, a good chance to demonstrate that for you. So we'll start by uh, getting the, or just taking the extension plate off there, and we need to get access into the top of the machine. I have shown this in other videos, but it's pretty quick to get off. It's just a matter of lifting the lid there, and just remove this one screw here, open the front door here, and then lift, uh, you'll probably find that that will lift by itself, just lift the right hand edge and slide, just be careful that the take up lever here doesn't catch here, so you can just turn the machine to get the take up lever down, out of the way there, and that will allow you to slide the cover off, you'll be able to see it clearly with this one. I'll get you a closer look there, it's fairly obvious. Now this is the quadrant gear here, this plastic gear, and that has a shaft that runs through it here, and that, that shaft is connected to a linkage back here that leads to the um, cam stack here which has all the pattern cams on it. So what happens is when you push the uh, selector in and turn it, this, uh, it should, there's a little gear on the back of the selector, you might be able to see, you can see on the back of the selector there's this gear here, and when you push and turn that, uh, that should these should mesh, these gears should mesh, it's not meshing very well at the moment because this is broken, uh, but that should mesh and turn this quadrant gear, which in turn, uh, turns this shaft here and that in turn moves the uh, a linkage here that leads back and selects the pattern stitches. So we can see on this particular machine that there is a crack here. There's a crack running along here. If we compare that, this, this is a good, uh, this is a brand new uh, quadrant gear here. So you can see the little teeth down here that mesh in with the on the back of the selector dial gears and there's the the hole that the shaft goes through and there's a hole here for the clamping uh, nut and um, little bolt that goes through there so the clamping bolt just clamps this down onto the shaft here now there's a big crack through that on the original, so you can see that on the original, you know, there's a big crack running through this area here, just below the uh, the hole where the clamp clamping bolt goes through there. So that is um, causing the this whole uh, quadrant here to slip around on the shaft. In fact, you can see the spline 
in here on the shaft so this is actually moved back and it's probably all got out of a sink there so basically what we need to do here is um, loosen the clamp bolt here and we'll also need to loosen this uh, screw here for this linkage here and that should allow us to uh, push the shaft back slightly and remove this gear, this quadrant gear and reinstall the new one and then it's just a matter of resetting it so that uh, what you see on the dial matches what's being selected by the linkage back to the cam stack here where the pattern cams are. So let's have a wee uh, look at what we need to do here. So this is the uh, the mounting screw here and it's in a very awkward position where it's sort of facing down there. I need to get a screwdriver onto that. So I want to sort of angle that up a bit. See if I can work that up. Just want to be careful that I don't um, force anything here damage something else. I think what I'll do is I'll loosen this. I mean this has to be loosened anyway. I'm just going to start by loosening that there and that might allow me to get a bit of movement here. I think what's happening here is because uh, this gear here is split what I think's happened is that this this part here has risen too far and is not allowing this piece to turn under here because it's jamming under this plate here. So I guess really the only thing uh, for it is to uh, you know probably undo this nut here. It's normally would be stop, stopped by this little ridge here. Would not allow this nut to be loosened. Looks like an 8mm spanner will do it. Let's see if I can... yeah looks like I can undo the nut. I mean you wouldn't want to do this if the um, quadrant gear was intact uh, but you wouldn't need to because if it was intact it would slide under this bar here quite nicely and you could get a screwdriver on the other end and undo the screw which is the way it's designed but because we can't do that this is the next best option so now that that's loose there Probably no need to go much looser than that at this stage. So now we just need to look at pushing the shaft back far enough to allow this quadrant gear to come off the shaft. Get the new one on there. But there's a circlip. Or is it an E? It might be an E clip. It's probably going to be quite difficult to see there. Not sure if you'll be able to see it very well, but right down here there's a clip and that needs to come off the shaft there to allow the shaft to be pushed back through the gear through here. So now I need to do this without losing the clip. It's got it. Now the clip did go down into the machine there somewhere but I'm sure I can retrieve it. I should be able to push this shaft out here gently. Just get it started with a screwdriver there. There we go. I wouldn't lever that too hard if it doesn't come easily. Uh, there must be something else holding it there. So here we go. I'm only going to take this shaft back far enough to get this gear off here. There's no need to go any further. This is where it was jamming on the top here jamming under this plate here. I also loosened this. I don't think that's necessary. I know how that was set. I took note of where that was set but I'll just tighten that back up. A little e-clip there. Okay here we have the culprit. Uh, you can see a quite a split through the um, where the shaft where the bolt goes through there and th this is the main problem here this this split here so um, that's you know split there and it, and that's allowed the shaft to slip around inside here so that upsets uh, things quite a bit obviously so just a matter of um, removing the uh, screw here let's get a screwdriver if it's loose just use a thumbnail I guess so just 
remove that screw there get the new part and put the screw in the nut so the screw goes through here just screw it far enough to uh, grab the nut there but not tighten this here so you can can see what happens here is the as you tighten the screw there it tightens this gap here and clamps uh, this here onto the shaft through here so that's all ready to put back on so really just the reversal of the removal procedure let's put the except we have to make some adjustments and push the shaft into that hole there now that it is quite tight um, I'm going to have to be careful here I wonder whether just the uh, putting this on might have tightened it slightly I'll just remove the screw should be able to um, put the screw in later I just want to make sure that that screw was not tightening that at all because that shaft is a little bit tight to get through there it's still quite tight uh, it might just need a little bit of help there I'm just going to push gently on the back of the shaft and just gently work that in just maybe give that a wee wiggle there yeah that is pretty tight I think that's through far enough to get the e-clip on there Ooh, I think that got it yep it's on there I'm tempted to uh, compare this with a with another machine to see how far back uh, this this should go okay so that's just loose on there now and I will go and grab another machine and just have a wee gander at you know how far back this needs to go here's an identical machine here if we have a close look here we'll see that there is a little bit of spline uh, sticking out the back there and a, quite a quite a distance to the shoulder there a little bit of clearance at the front I would say that's about 1.5 millimeter distance there from the back of the this plate here as long as it's close I think we'll be good there oh what I didn't uh, think about too well is the this travel here we've got to make sure that this these teeth remain engaged through the full travel of the lever and I can see there that it's it's going a little bit too far the the teeth are very close to becoming unmeshed here and at the full travel here so this here is not sort of central in the in the travel uh, so I'm gonna have to take that clip back off and just get that I think the easiest way would be to get this knob in its center of its roughly in its center of its travel and then have this vertical and remesh the gears so I'll just whip that um, circlet back off there okay I've got the clip off there so I can now turn this to whatever area I like and so what I want to do is I want to get this knob here in the center of its travel and I would say if we count one two Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. So four and four. I mentioned also in the in another video. I can't remember exactly which video it was. Where I, I don't know what I was thinking, but um, I, for some reason I looked at this here and I thought, oh, maybe that's for a bobbin winding position. But that's that's not the case. I mean, it's a, it's a disc. Um, it's it's for the. Uh, optional you know uh, pattern discs that you put in so yeah I'm not sure what I was uh, thinking about there so one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen eighteen nineteen twenty twenty one twenty two twenty three twenty four twenty five twenty six twenty
three, four, and on the fifth, I think that is the central position, yeah? So what have we got here? One, two, three, four, five. So it's the central, so this is the basting stitch, is the central position there. And if we come back around, and here, at that point, I want the this quadrant to be as close to vertical as I can get it. It's not quite, uh, if I go one tooth, yeah, that's pretty good there now. So the quadrant's vertical, it's in the center of its throw, and the knob is also in it, the center of its throw. So these gears here are now meshed correctly. And then, so now I'll just put the uh, little E-clip back on. Okay, so we should have good meshing there now. Yep, that's looking good there now. More centralized. At that point, you can do the screw up. Okay, should be able to get to it from here. Just tighten this. It doesn't need to be overly tight, just firm. I don't think that's going to go anywhere. Nice, okay. We can see on the front here that the, the dial is doing its thing there. But now what we need to do is position this correctly here. I'll show you what that actually does. This this uh, movement here, this, this here is loose on the shaft at the moment, but when it's tight and you push in, you push in here with this lever here, what that does is it pushes this linkage back. You can see it? So it pushes it back here and what that does is it disengages if I can get a close look here, it actually uh, disengages, there's a little um, finger that go, slots into these slots here, into these slots you can see on the back of this shaft here. So what that does is uh, when you push the button it pulls this back and allows this whole linkage to move up and down into another slot. So when you release the button this pops back into another slot here, you can't quite see it there, but there's a little positioner that goes into these slots and that positions the, the stitches so that moves back and forward to engage and disengage out of these slots here so we need to make sure that's set correctly but not just that we need to make sure that whatever we've selected uh, for the pattern cam matches what's on the on the dial on the front so I'm just looking at the interaction here with the, the dial. So when the dial's here, this is at its, uh, looking from the front, it's at its most uh, clockwise position. Is it? Left. Yeah, clockwise. And clockwise here, on this linkage, um, pushes the selector down. So it's moving in this direction, clockwise direction, looking from the front. So that pushes this linkage down. So what I think I could do is just select the lowest uh, stitch on the cam here and then tighten this and that should match on the front. That's the plan. Just, just a matter of unlatching this here and pushing the selector down. Also make sure when you are trying to move these that the stitch width knob is right down here on zero. Also make sure you're not engaged in a uh, buttonhole there and also make sure you're not um, engaged in the stretch stitching and that should allow this linkage to just freely move up and down here. I'm manually um, pushing the linkage here. If I push this right back that fully disengages this here and that allows me to pull the, the actual selector up and down here. So I want to make sure that's sitting right on the base there. That's the, that'll be the um, very left hand stitch as selected. And then we want to make sure that this engages properly. 
in the actual selector. I'm looking from a, a different angle here to sh try and show you how this works here. So when you push the lever back, that pushes this. There's the pin that goes into the slots there. It's actually jumped out of the the little um, selector here. So I push that back and make sure that this little pin, it's very difficult to get on camera here. So what I'm doing here is making sure that this pin here goes down into the back of the selector here. There's the selector that the my tweezers are hitting on the top of there. I've just moved it down and then it will pop into a slot there on the actual selector so that's gone in there now. So now when I um, move this back slightly and I can now move the selector up and down. So we want it right on the bottom there. We should be able to just provisionally tighten this. Now a little bit of movement there but I think probably in the middle of its movement there will be about right and we can check it. I'll just try and get that screw a little bit tighter. It's probably not the best position for it because that screw is difficult to get to but I think I should be able to just nip it up slightly. It's probably tight enough there and if we have a, a look at the greater scheme of things this is the screw I just tightened and now I should be able to push in on the selector here and move that up and down and you might be able to see back in here that's the selector moving up and down there So what I'll do is I'll, I'll tighten this here, just a little bit more, I think we're about right there. And then do some testing to make sure that these now correspond to the actual stitches that it will sew. And that's reasonably easy to do by eye, I don't think we need to necessarily thread the machine up. Um, but let's start with just a straight out zigzag there. So what we should see, once we put the uh, stitch width on the widest stitch, we should see the needle bar do a zigzag. And I'll install a needle to make this a bit clearer. So when I turn the machine, I would hope to get a zigzag, but we're not. We're getting, what are we getting? I think that's the basting stitch. Yeah, I might, be, I might be out by one here, um, so I need to move this selector to the, to the left. And an easy way of doing that, it's actually easier if I do it from this angle because it just puts the, puts the um, screw in the right place so I can get to the screw a little bit easier here. So I want to try, I want to get to the screw here. I've manually put it in where the machine actually did the appropriate stitch. So we get a few straight stitches and then we'll get a zig and a zag. So once I knew uh, I had the right stitch selected I moved the dial here to the appropriate stitch which is the, the one shown there and then uh, tightened the, the screw here and that that works perfectly well there now. So, I mean, the, there is a certain amount of movement here, so it's not going to line up in the red lines all the time. Straight stitch. That's our blind hemming. Zigzag there. We should be zigzagging there. There's a zig and a zag there. Looking good. And what else can we look at? Maybe the tricot. Tricot type stitch there. And we should get three step zigzag. So that is working just fine there now. So once that's done, that's pretty much all you really need to, to do as far as adjustment is concerned. I noticed that there is some old 
grease down in there. Leftover, probably original. Uh, more than likely, I would say that's probably a lithium grease of some sort. So I would be tempted to grease that. And while you've got the lid off, it's probably quite a good idea to go ahead and do the oiling as well while you're there. I won't go through that in this video. So then it's really just a matter of um, putting the panel back on, the face cover here, and getting the lid back on. Face plate, I'm not sure if I've shown this before, but there's two pins here. They just line up, line up the two pins with the holes for the hinges. And that just drops into place there. Make sure the take up levers out of the way there. There's a spring here that clips over this shaft here. So you come in from the left with the left hand side down and then you should be able to just move. Might have to push it across a little bit, just a little bit of force there, tiny bit of force. Get the top screw in there. screw tight there and we should be all set to go. Now I've no idea what uh, condition this machine's in, I don't think I've ever assessed this one so I don't even have a press foot here for it although I could grab one off another machine and, and give it a test so um, but I'm sure that that will be fine. I mean as far as the job that's been done here we're all set to go. Let me just quickly thread it up and see if it actually does work. As I say, there could be other issues with this machine, I'm not sure. The drive belt sounded a bit funny there, so that might need sorting. Almost turning into an assessment video now. Let's see, what have we got? We don't have a bulb. We have power. Sounds okay. Uh, let's thread a let's thread a bobbin. I'm just going to oil there, one on here. Doesn't sound too bad. Oh, that's capacitor gone. I've just cut the power. That problem where the machine runs on like that is a capacitor blowing more than likely in the foot controller. If I turn the power back on, whew, it's starting to smell. I'm not touching the foot controller. I'll turn the power on. Yep, and it's starting to smell stinky um, electronic type. And I would say that there's a dead capacitor. Yeah, I can see it's a reefer capacitor down in here, notorious for um, failing. So I've shown in another video how to uh, take these apart and I don't know if I show how to replace a capacitor but um, at a pinch um, if you want to carry on using your machine you can actually remove the capacitor. It's not recommended to leave it like that um, but yep I will um, sort that capacitor and then come back and thread the machine and see if it actually works. I've removed the capacitor from here. I did a video on it too by the way, just a quick one, to show how to remove the capacitor here and that um, you know at a pinch you can use the machine without it but get it replaced as soon as you can I would say. It's really just for mains noise suppression. The machine's not running on now which is quite handy. And I'll just get a bobbin wound and test it. Okay, just going to wind a bobbin quickly here. The bobbin winder works, that's good. I really do like that system. That is a great bobbin winding system. And here we go. So, so I'll just try and get as much of this in, in the shot as possible. <laughs> uh, so we're on zigzag. I'll just go to the widest stitch there. It's 
stitch lengths too low. What have we got? Stitch length. Zigzag. Yeah, something. Something not quite right with this machine. It probably needs a, uh, a mechanic. <laughs> I'll see if I can track one down. Tension's probably a bit loose, maybe. Anyway, that zigzag. Um, let's go for the oh, straight stitch. It's a little bit noisy. Needs needs a service. Blind him. This is tricot. Yep, that seems to be working there. It's actually not sounding too bad. Considering it's not been serviced. We've got a what's that? A scallop type stitch. Yep. Yep, that one's working. Selector seems to be working okay. Yeah. All good. Okay, that's done and tested. Uh, I'll probably go ahead and service this machine, and I'd say that's going to be a good little machine, that one. So um, I hope you found that helpful, and thank you very much for watching.